Helping my crew is what I do. When it comes to problem solving, students are empowered to think about things and find a solution for themselves. Problem solving is fun because I get to learn different strategies and then I get to learn what they're thinking. And the teacher's job is more to question, to guide, to help them come up with the answer on their own. I don't care if it was right or wrong, give me a thumbs up if you tried something new. It feels great to share in front of everybody and the people that are sharing, it's like you're learning from them. And then when you get to teach the people that taught you, then they can learn from what you did. I love to see when they catch, when they do something wrong. That means that your mind is growing and you're thinking. Sometimes I get things wrong, that's okay, and then I just correct myself and then I just be better than yesterday. Kiss your brain because guess what? You grew your brain today and you should feel very, very proud of you. How did you know that you needed to add five more tens? If you had four tens, how did you, or four tens, how did you know you needed to add five more? Because five, four plus five is nine. Mm, very interesting. All right, keep going. We go into the grapple time where the students work and try to figure out. During that time, me and my assistant are conferencing with the students just to see what they're thinking, where they are, and how we can push their strategies. So how did you figure out four should go there? I figured out four should go there because, um, Oh, so you know that math back. Two plus four yeah. equals six. So you filled in that four. And then how did you know that this should be a five? Five, ten. Before problem solving, we do something called an anticipatory framework, which is basically my planning. I'm anticipating what strategies I think the students are going to be using during problem solving that day. I write down who's using what, taking notes on understandings, misconceptions. Yeah, and we just use that to collect data. And then based on the data of like which kids are doing what, I analyze where most of the class is at, who I'm going to choose to push the whole class's thinking forward. Wow, very interesting. I have never seen that strategy before, Jenaise. During that eight minutes of problem solving, we come together and we discuss, okay, who has the content that we're looking for, then we just come to a conclusion that that person will be explaining it. But instead of just adding on, he intentionally added five tens because he knew four plus five was nine. Oh, so I thought that might be cool to good. see that you don't yeah. have to like build all that. Yeah, and I kind of wanted to share which is the same strategy Destin used yesterday. Okay. But I feel like a lot of them are trying it, but not quite sure. So okay. I feel like a solid person to, okay. we can talk about the same things, how they were the same yeah. as Yeah, because I know uh, I got the same thing. Summer yeah. and she did that, but yes. I told her to try to. And that's what she's doing on yeah. the back. Yeah. That's what I asked her. I said, whose strategy did you use? Mm -hmm. She said, I used Jenna Eases. I was like, you think you can try Destin's strategy? So she's going to yeah, try Yeah, that's what I went and I challenged him. He, yeah. he did the same thing, but he did subtraction this time. But I don't want to like throw something. Oh, I don't yeah. think they're yeah. ready for yeah. that yet. Yeah. What goes into deciding what the kids are gonna present is mostly the data I collect. Um, I predict what they're going to be, how they're going to be solving, and then I see kind of where most of the kids are at. If most of the kids aren't understanding the problem, I'm gonna choose somebody who's very clear at explaining their strategy and a more simple strategy to try to get more access for the whole class. If most of the kids are understanding but using a simpler um, strategy, I'm gonna choose a simple strategy and a more complex one to try to push their thinking forward and the discussion will be based more on how to move from one strategy to the next. All right, crew, hands on top. I want you to leave everything where it is and transition to the carpet. Me and Ms. Campbell, did you hear that? We just had a super long discussion about all the great work that we saw. And just because your work is not being shared, guess what? Does that mean you did something wrong? No, it just means it's not what the whole crew needs right now. So we wrote names down. 
we took some notes. Go ahead, Blessing. So that next time, we might get to share you. I'm going to remember what you did, okay? When I'm selecting student work, I look to see if students are using a physical model, which is something they are physically moving, like cubes or base 10 blocks, a visual model, like drawings, tallies, or number lines, or a symbolic model, like a series of equations or invented algorithms. Today, I picked a physical model and was hoping to connect it to the symbolic version of the same method to help move more students to having access to solving that way. All right. But today, Frederick did something really cool, and I want you to take a look at what Frederick did. It feels great to share in front of everybody, and the people that are sharing, it's like you're learning from them. 